In this video, you will learn how to analyze stock financials in the most effective way so you can make the best investment decisions. Before we get into the stock financial analysis, the question that comes up is how do you get the stock financial statements in the first place and where should you analyze these financial statements? And the answer for most people that is most effective is Excel because after you have the financial statements, you can do any calculations you like. And the best way to get the stock financial statements on your Excel or Google Sheets spreadsheet is to use Y Sheets. Here, all you have to do is enter the company name or ticker. And then in one click, as you will see here, you're going to get all of the financial statements going back to 2003 and everything is already formatted for you. Now, starting with the income statement, one tip that I will give you is to click here and then insert a column. And then from here, you can go insert spark lines and you can select the column, select the range. And here we're just going to select all of the revenues. And what's going to happen We'll put it in green, why not? What's going to happen is that you're going to get the train line for each of the financial statement items. So this is going to allow you to more easily see the general direction of which the numbers are going. For most stocks and companies, the most important items of the income statement are always the revenue, the gross profit, the operating income, and the net income. So these are the first items that I will pay attention to to see are they growing are they shrinking what could be some of the possible causes for this decreases or increases and this is where you combine uh, your qualitative research with your quantitative research of a particular company so starting with the revenue here we can see that for Apple year after year the revenue seems to be increasing at a pretty healthy rate uh, the same with gross profit. So it seems like the company is really making an effort to increase its gross profit margins. The operating income seems a little bit less stable. It seems like it goes uh, up and down from year to year, but it seems like it is taking the, the right direction the last couple of years. And the net income seems pretty steady, which is a pretty good sign for a company that's consistently growing its revenues and therefore the net income as well. After you do the general analysis, then you should get into the specific analysis for that stock or for that industry. So, for example, if we're talking Apple, which is in the tech industry, one of the key items is the research and development expenses, because these companies rely on research and development to be able to grow their earnings and their income. So one of the things that you could do for these items is to use the percentage change formula where you take the most recent value minus the previous value divided by the previous value and that tells you the percentage change and you can compare this percentage changes with any other item of the financial statement or the income statement that you like so for example in this case we could compare it with the net income and as we can see here uh, the research and development expense increased 15 percent the net income only increased six percent so that's maybe not too good here 23 percent with the 23 percent net income uh, increase so that's pretty good and you get the idea you can do this for any of the different items of the financial statements this is going to give you a good idea of how profitable are those increases in important items of the financial statements especially the income statement items like the research and development moving on to how to analyze the balance sheet this is very simple so the balance sheet follows a simple equation and that is assets minus liabilities equals stock shareholders equity now if you're wondering what assets are which because it is a complicated word assets are things that provide financial benefits to the company whereas liabilities are obligations that the company has to pay off the good thing with Y Sheets is that you get the output in this format where you get the current assets first and then you have the non-current assets. And the difference between these two is that the current assets are assets that can be more easily liquidated, meaning turned into cash. 
Whereas the non-current assets are things that are a little bit harder or way harder, in fact, to be able to turn into cash. On the other side of the balance sheet, we have the liabilities. And again, they're divided into total current liabilities and total non-current liabilities. The current liabilities are liabilities that have to be paid off in the short term, whereas the long term liabilities or the non current liabilities is stuff that needs to be paid off in the future. This results in total assets and then total liabilities. And again, if you subtract those numbers, you're going to get total stockholders equity. Now, in terms of the actual analysis, the most important things to look at is the total assets and the total liabilities. From here, what you want to see is a healthy increase in the total assets. And this tells you that the company is being able to accumulate more valuable assets over time. And that is the key factor. Are they valuable or not? And this is where you look at the individual components and decide for that particular company. Does it make sense that they're increasing property planning equipment? Why? Or why not same thing with the liabilities um, it's not a big problem if the company keeps increasing its liabilities as long as those liabilities are going to be helpful for the company to be able to generate higher returns and higher cash flow for shareholders one type of analysis that you can do is combine do the percentage change that was shown uh, in the income statement and then analyze, for example, property plan and equipment or any particular item uh, here in the balance sheet and compare it with revenue, with net income. So you can get a better idea of how different numbers compare with the financial results in the income statement. One of the other things, and this is very relevant to companies that may not be as well established as Apple, is to look at the current liabilities and the long-term liabilities and make sure that the company is able to pay them off based on the cash that it has. Because if they're not able to pay it off, that means that they're gonna be in trouble financially very soon. And that means that your investment could be at a great risk. So you really want to make sure that that is the case. Otherwise, you're in for a tough ride. The last factor that you wanna analyze is the total stock holders equity section and here what you want to see is a healthy increase in the stockholders equity and the reason why you want that is because if the company is able to produce that that means that they're increasing their number of assets which is generally pretty healthy and their liabilities are not out of control so if you do total assets minus uh, the liabilities that means that that would result in growth and as a stockholder if something happened to the company, the company was going to sell off, the value technically that you would be entitled to uh, is dictated by the stockholders equity in a way. So you want to make sure that that value is consistently growing and that shows that the company is financially responsible to shareholders. Now let's go into how to analyze the cash flow statement effectively. So the cash flow statement is very simple. Basically what it is, is it tells you how the company is making or spending cash that it has. So the first section is the operating activity section. So here it is from its operating activities like selling products or whatnot. How is the company generating and spending cash? And then for Apple, in this case, we see that everything starts with the net income that the company made. And then from here, the depreciation and amortization are added because that means that those are expenses that the company expensed on the income statement, but are not actual cash um, expenses that the company had to pay off. And then here, there's a whole bunch of different items where you can see either they could be negative, meaning that cash had to go out, and they could be positive, meaning that the company kept that cash, and altogether, if you do the sum, then that results in the net cash provided by the operating activities. Then the other section is the net cash used in investing activities. Based on the company's investing activities, the cash could be negative and positive. And if it's negative, it basically means that the company invested a good amount of cash. If it's positive, then it means that it got more money from its investments that it invested back into the business. And looking at the different items here gives you a good idea as to whether or not this increases or decreases are positive for that particular company. Lastly, we have the net cash provided by financing activities. 
And here the idea is, is the company paying off creditors and people that own equity more than it's getting from them? It's the same idea. So as you can see here, an important thing is again to look at the trend. But most importantly, where's the cash flow going? So here we see a lot of cash going into debt repayment. Here we see that the company did issue some stock and got money from it. And then we see quite a big dividend uh, payout for stockholders as well. And then at the end, one of the most important things that you can look at is the free cash flow that the company generated. So the free cash flow is basically where you take the operating cash flow and then you subtract the capital expenditures and that gives you the free cash flow. That means the cash that the company generated from its operating activities after you subtract the capital expenditures, which are expenses that the business had to made in order to continue to grow. And you want this number to continue to grow because this is the actual cash flow that stockholders would be entitled or the owners of the company would be entitled to if the company's cash flow were to be distributed um, to those stockholders. So this is a very good indicator of a healthy, profitable company that is set to grow and to be able to distribute some of those profits back to the shareholders in terms of dividends or buybacks or anything like that. After you analyze all of the financial statements for that particular stock or company, the last step is to look at some of the key ratios that you can calculate based on those financial results. So you can calculate them manually using the formulas that you can easily Google. But with Y sheets, you can also get them on a historical basis. And I've highlighted some of the most important metrics that you can look at. So first we have the return on equity. And that tells you based on the stockholders equity, what is the return in terms of net income that the company is generating. Then we have uh, the return on invested capital. And this tells you more from an investment and a capex perspective, how much money the company is generating. We also have dividend yield, which is a useful metric if you're investing in companies that provide dividends to investors. The P ratio, uh, that's very valuable to see at what entry point are you buying the stock in terms of price. Same with price to sales ratio, except this is uh, taking the total revenue of the company relative to the price. And then we also have enterprise value, which is based on the balance sheet values. Altogether, this is going to give you a more solid understanding of the company that you're analyzing and whether or not you want to proceed further to do more research or even invest in the company. So that's it. Now you know how to analyze stock financials at a simple level. And trust me, if you keep doing this practice for many different companies, you're going to get a lot better and your analysis is going to be able to be very valuable and able to provide you with good investment decisions that you can be proud of later. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share with a friend that might benefit. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video.